Good day, fellas. Today we're dealing with these two clusters. They belong to a 2015 Ford Focus that has 80,000 miles, but a broken cluster. And we got another one that has 20,000 miles. So now we're trying to bring the mileage up to 80 to match what we have in the actual vehicle. Hey viewers, welcome back to Dallas Auto Diag Night Shift. <laughs> uh, as I said, it's a 2015 Ford Focus. Uh, belongs to a lot. Uh, I visited today, did two cars over there, and they had told me about this vehicle. Problem is, uh, there's a lot of Ford Focuses uh, out there, but the problem, it's a stick shift, and uh, those clusters are different than the automatic. Uh, the car has 80,000 miles originally and the only cluster they found was at 20,000 miles so they want to fix this issue um, they want to bring the uh, mileage up to uh, to the actual mileage uh, the original this is the original and I think I marked the original here I think they said this screen doesn't work some some about it doesn't work they said the uh, the connection inside is broken or something we're going to uh, go in and to take a look at what we're doing so I think in this case we have two options the first one is to swap EEPROMs from here to here and this one the one they bought is gonna have the mileage um, swapped with the EEPROM uh, second we either probably can take the screen or fix whatever broken in this one uh, or to switch the screen if it is the broken part from here to here so they can use this original one with the 80,000 miles. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take this cover by uh, releasing these uh, tabs. So once you take this bezel off, everything comes apart. This separates from the back, the front, you don't have to take anything uh, else. And I think I know what's broken in this one, the original. You see how the, I think there should be a ribbon here connects that this screen to this right here, which is missing. Uh, this one is not broken. It doesn't seem to be broken, but I think this is the broken uh, latch. All right, we have another ribbon here, right here, that I am going to remove to be able to separate this board, I think, if it's not attached to anything in the bottom. All right, it was easy. It wasn't hard. Uh, only those four tabs, one, two, three, four. Make sure you disconnect the ribbon first. Uh, now <clears throat> I'm going to use this uh, this tool <laughs> to take the uh, the pointers. After we do this, we're gonna flip it. There is one, two, three, four to take this. I can I think I can do it with one hand. Yep. All right, so we have what I think an EEPROM one, two, three, four. It's four legged, and there's five right here. And we have another one here, which is on the other side. Uh, six right here. So I'm not sure which one is the EEPROM. I'm going to have to Google them. Let's do this. Taking a look again at the design of this uh, cluster, uh, the defect part is here and this small one. And I don't think this 
a EEPROM if it is an EEPROM. I don't think this would house the uh, the mileage. I think it's one of these uh, ones here, or probably the main MCU. So I just have an idea. Why don't we just replace this board and uh, I mean take sorry take this board from this cluster and use it on the original one i think that's gonna make it work so this is the uh the donor uh cluster and i already see it right here so let's go forward on, on with this one <laughs> while i was doing <laughs> trying to get this out carefully <laughs> my son come and <laughs> he pushes this the RPM needle and I said, uh, you know, be careful. <laughs> this is not ours. You might break it. He said, I was just trying to hear the sound. <laughs> so he thought that when you move this, you will hear vroom, vroom. This is how it looks. The intact one, the good one. I was able to take it out. And now let's put it back here. All right, so after half assembling it out i want to try it before uh moving further so this is the connector for it this is the layout for it and this is the uh, instrument cluster right here it has one power pin number three pin number three power pin number 10 is ground and we have one and two, four and five computer data lines. Now I'm not sure which one of these, either the medium speed can or the I can, um, the talk can happen through it. But here we're on the uh, the CAN bus uh, diagram, and uh, we see the two. Uh, if we follow them. I'm going to show you, this is the DLC and we have, uh, not 14, 11 and 8 and 3 and 1. So coming here using this uh, GoDiag um, harness, bench harness, I was able to put pin 11 number one right here you see this number one this goes to 11 on the connector uh sorry this 11 on the dlc goes to one on the connector i said it backwards and so on so let me just make sure everything is in all right now we're going to provide power Now we're going to, after we hook up our VCI, we're going to try to identify it. We'll go forward. Of course, we're going to have to go manual. Manual selection, forward, focus, and it's 2.0 turbo, turbocharge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was able to read the uh, the cluster. Let's go in and Nothing is lit, so I don't think it detects a key on. We need something else to tell it that the key is on. But I have hooked up everything that goes to it, unless I missed something. Well, we have medium speed, battery voltage, I can. Uh, display chip ground. This comes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, 
Well, Sony Audio. <clears throat> Not sure. No. Display signal. Okay, come here, here, and it comes here. Park selected and ground, yeah. All right, what we need to do is, let's look at the live data. Look like we need to hook it up to the vehicle itself to be able to read the mileage. See here, power mode key, VM key out, so. Total distance, miles, it says zero. Why is it like that? Let's look up the power one more time. Okay, um, I think using active tests we can zero the needles. Um, okay, let's put this here. Let's start with speedometer. No, we don't want any data. And right now, 0%. Let's do 10%. But well, right now it's not on 10, it's 15. So let me zero it. So this is 10. I'm gonna increase it to 20 and interesting why is that that should be 30 it might no yeah that's not good that should be 40 percent 50 percent yeah you know what I think it's 50 percent of 180 so 50% of 20, let's go back to decrease 50% of 180, that should be 90. Now we're on 80. Let me let me put it on 90. Okay, so now it's on 90. Let's go decrease 0%. Okay, I think you see now it's on 0, sharp. So this is 10% which is about 20 which makes sense because this is 180 so yeah increase 30 40% 50% yeah it should be on a 90 it's a little bit above the 90 let me fix it we're gonna do the same thing with the temperature gauge let's go 10 20 30 40 50 Okay, let me zero to the 50, to the middle. I think this is 50, it is decrease to zero again. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, this is 50. I'm going to do the same thing with the other two. I don't want to bother you. I looked everywhere in the scanner. I couldn't find anything that would make us turn this on. So, we're going to send back to the customer and make them plug it to the car and hopefully they can send us a video or a picture to uh, as a verification of repair